systematic reviews, as you know, um, are a series of methodologies to search systematically and then review, meta and analyse the data and present it. And we fund through three different systems. We fund the UK Cochrane Centre and a large number, around 50% of the review groups. We fund in York the, the NIHR Centre for Reviews and Dissemination, where there is a, a real policy um, kind of prioritisation in it. And then we also fund the TAR reviews, which are the centres, academic centres, that do the technology assessment reviews, which predominantly support NICE, but also support the Department of Health policy makers. So we're funding in three different ways. Of course, CRD in York not only publishes their reviews, but also runs a couple of very important databases for us, the DARE database and the Economic Evaluation database, EAD database which are searchable and available for people in the NHS and those are very useful as well. We find it wonderful that the Cochrane system updates them on a regular basis so that if we hunt and find one we know that it won't be out of date, it will be what we need to know. So in this way through NIHR we have increased funding for systematic reviews in order to ensure that our health service has access to up-to-date information that has been brought together, systematically searched for, proper meta-analysis, high methodology to give us the best information that there is. I'm very proud we fund systematic reviews. The idea that the NHS with Department of Health funding should major in this worldwide came from the original Director General of Research um, Sir Michael Peckham and actually we have always in the NHS been leaders in the field. Many of you will know that I'm actually an, an editor for the Cochrane um, review system. I edit the haemoglobinopathies section. Luckily other people are helping these days because I'm rather busy but that shows you my commitment um, to systematic reviews and why I think they're important. We know that NICE use them, we know that clinicians in the service use them. I can tell you that policy makers here in the Department of Health use them. The big um, example that we always use when asked about the importance of uh, systematic reviews was of course the Albumin study in um, acute uh, ITU situations which showed that it was just as good to use other solutions as, as using albumin. But much more recently there's been a study of cochlear implants in deaf children and now this has been picked up by NICE, gone into the guidance for treating deaf children so the right children, if the NICE guidance is followed, will get the right cochlear implant. The Cochrane Collaboration have become increasingly responsive to need to demand from policy customers and, and clinicians. And one example is the speedy and super response to the pandemic flu uh, of last year. They updated, you updated, three reviews before the end of the year. Thank you for that. Had it turned out to be a serious and nasty infection, that would have saved lives. And we have the information now for future pandemics. Another example, which is very important too, is the work with the Health Protection Agency and also with the WHO on updating all the reviews relating to disaster management, particularly important in Haiti, important more recently in Madeira and in other places. This responsiveness is really important to make sure that policymakers and physicians in the field are using the best evidence to give the best outcome.